Now we turn to uh, basic building blocks in the outline. That's going to give some uh, technical background for the uh, analysis that we're going to carry out. And uh, you may study this now, follow along, or go back to it and learn about it in more detail once you've seen more applications and feel more motivated. So here are the statistical underpinnings. Uh, a very useful statistical technique is logistic regression, which uses a loaded parameterization. And that can be used for different kinds of dependent variables, binary, ordinal, or nominal dependent variables. We're also going to talk about probabilities and odds and odds ratios. Odds are ratio probabilities and it refers to a single variable, categories of a single variable, relating them to each other. Odds ratios refers to a relationship between two variables and it's a ratio of odds. Now the M plus modeling uses this loaded parameterization to estimate the parameters of the model. But given that those loaded estimates may be a bit difficult to, to interpret, we also provide output that contains probabilities, odds, and odds ratios. Now turning to slide 12, we're talking about sampling distributions of these quantities. And by sampling distribution, I mean what you get, for instance, in a Monte Carlo study when you take repeated uh, samples from a hypothetical population and estimate a, a certain parameter. And you get then a distribution over the different replications of your Monte Carlo study. So often we get normal distribution or approximately normal distributions. And that's the case for logits, for the coefficients that come from logistic regression. And they have a chance to vary in a normal fashion, given the fact that they, the, the parameter values vary from minus infinity to plus infinity like a normal distribution does. So maximum likelihood estimation assumes this approximate normality, at least in large samples. And therefore, you typically see these symmetric confidence intervals, the, where the you take the estimate and then take plus minus 1.96 times the standard error to get the uh, upper and lower limits of the 95% confidence interval. Now, in contrast, probabilities vary from 0 to 1, and therefore will be likely to have non-normal distributions. And for non-normal distributions, you need to use, or you should use, uh, non-symmetric confidence intervals. And by a non-symmetric interval, I mean that the distance between, let's say, the lower limit and the estimate is different from the distance between the estimate and the upper limit. So that's in contrast to the regular confidence interval here, which uses 1.96 times standard error for both the lower and the upper limit. Odds and odds ratios vary from 0 to plus infinity. And we note then that 1 is the neutral point. That is, when there is no, for instance, with odds ratios, when there is no relationship between the two variables. They have non-normal distributions as well, so you need to use a non-symmetric confidence interval also there. So in this case, then, you have significance if the confidence interval does not contain one, the neutral point. Now, non-symmetric confidence interval limits for odds and odds ratios can be obtained uh, directly by exponentiating the confidence interval limits of the logits, where the logits are normally distributed. So you take the normal distributed, the limits of the normal distribution for that logit estimate, and then exponentiate the upper and the lower limit. We're going to get into detail of that further on. And there, thereby you get non-symmetric confidence interval. So this is done systematically through uh, the M plus output. Here then on slide 13, I give you a quick reminder of logistic regression. So for the figure top left, x-axis corresponds to a continuous x variable, x2. Let's say that it is h. 
and the y-axis has to do uh, the, with the binary dependent variable u let's say it is cancer or not and the issue is that we want to for a binary variable u equals 0 or 1 model not the values but the probability of the events so the we want a regression curve that varies between 0 and 1 like in this picture so you have then a symmetric curve here and uh, you can choose many different kinds but we're going to work with the logistic curve so we have a logistic regression u is a binary dependent variable and we pretend that we have a binary covariate x1 and a continuous covariate x2 so cancer smoking and age so we see that the probability of having a cancer uh, increases with age and it also increases as a function of being a smoker or not so for any given age you have this lower probability of cancer for non-smokers x1 equals 0 and a higher one for x1 equals 1 for the smokers so to get this s-shaped curve we write the probability of u equals 1 having the cancer as a function of the x values for individual i as this logit function and this is something that you can actually compute on a, any kind of calculator and the logit is then this linear expression uh, with the intercept beta 0 slope beta 1 and slope beta 2 so the, this what's in parentheses here is called the logit and that's linear so you have drawn that picture up in the top right corner here now two examples then here is that uh, the dependent variable can be a binary latent class indicator an observed variable and x1 can be a binary latent class variable so a latent variable instead of an observed dummy variable like smoker non-smoker and x2 can be a direct effect from a covariate that will be an example of how you use logistic regression you will see that example later on when we talk about measurement non-invariance across individuals another example is when the dependent variable is a latent class variable so the dependent variable is uh, unobserved with two classes and x1 and x2 are covariates predicting this latent class variable you may also have only one binary variable so say that you only have x1 and say that um, u is a latent class indicator and you have no x2 but you have an x1 which is say a, a binary latent class variable and then that we're talking about the measurement model in a latent class analysis that you also use for latent transition analysis so in this case there is no x2 and you just have two points on the logistic curve here two points probability values which are ruled by the logistic curve another general comment here is that these curves are parallel whenever and these curves are parallel uh, these lines are parallel whenever you don't have an interaction between x1 and x2 as over here when you have an interaction between them then the curves will be non-parallel so we'll we'll use that technique in several instances here now we talked about the case of a binary dependent variable how do you generalize that to more than two categories and to unordered categories because we have different models for unordered and ordered categories ordinal variables versus nominal variables well you can note then that you can rewrite this expression that we looked at the logit regression that we looked at in this case for only one x to uh, write it in a separate in a different form equ algebraically equivalent form but in a form then that can easily be generalized to more than two categories so here you have then the regression of a nominal variable u with r categories on a covariate x and you're then looking at multinomial logistic regression so you have an expression for a certain category r of the capital r possible categories for you 
in the numerator here, and in the denominator you have the sum of these exponential terms over all of the r categories, r minus 1 up to the last category, r, which gets, gets the value 1 because the last category is the reference category, so that both the intercept a and the slope b are 0. That is, you have e to the power of 0, which is uh, 1 according to mathematics. So you get that 1 as the last category. Now an odds ratio then is then easily uh, computed from this multinomial logistic regression. You just take the exponent of this slope b for the x and they represent the an odds ratio which is the odds of being in, in category r versus the last category for a certain x value x divided by the same odds for an x value x minus 1. So for instance you have for a binary x, x equals 1 versus x equals 0. So the odds ratio is the ratio of an odds for x equals 1 divided by, the ra by an odds for x equals 0. Now this same multinomial logistic regression formulation is used for regression with a latent nominal latent class variable as a dependent variable. So if you look at that on slide 15, as an example we have C1 regressed on X, that is the latent class variable at time point 1 in the latent transition analysis. So here then instead of a U we have this nominal latent uh, ca nominal variable, latent class variable is nominal, and we write it out multinomial logistic regression in the same way as on the previous slide and in the same fashion odds rate the odds ratio is e to the power of b for category r representing the odds we just talked about now very often then as we will see it's useful to change the reference class from the last class to the first class or some other class and to do that to change it to, from the last to the first, you subtract the um, logit for the first class so that the logit becomes zero for the first class. So you have then the, uh, uh, for, uh, for particular category R, you subtract from the intercept A1 and subtract from the slope B1, and you do that throughout like that. That's how you change the uh, reference class. Now this is, of course, not something you want to do by hand, but it's computed, it can be computed in the M plus model constraint command, but it also can be done automatically by reordering the latent classes as um, is now easily done in M plus since version 8.5. On slide 16, um, I'm talking more specifics about reordering latent classes. So say that we get we want we have this reading example and we would like to see the classes in the order of low reading uh, skills medium and high in the order that we have seen them in the example and let's refer to them then as class 1 class 2 class 3 so let's say that we do an m plus run and uh, m plus doesn't know which order we want the classes to come out so say that the run gives us the order of medium high low so the order is class 2 comes first, class 3 comes second, class 1 comes last. So now we want to reorder that to get it in the desirable order of low, medium, high. So we reorder the order 2, 3, 1 that we have up here to 3, 1, 2. And that is, we want the last one, the third one, to come first, to put 3 there. And we want the second, the first one appearing we want that to come second, so we say 1 here, th because it's the first one there. And we want the um, second appearing class to be last, so we put 2 there. That gives you the order low, medium, high. Well, you probably prefer your own way of thinking about how to do this. this here's how, how I usually write it out when I reorder. 
This is done using uh, OptSeed from the first run and S values where you give this order 312, which is the order that you want. And you can do this for one latent class variable as I show here or for several as you would have in latent transition analysis. And we're going to see examples of the case where you have several of them. This reordering can also be done to highlight different parts of the modeling. For instance, if you have the example of C1 regressed on the binary X variable poverty, and uh, you have the uh, case of low, medium, high, high being the reference class, then uh, say that you have that in your uh, output, that order, then the odds ratio for C1, uh, class number 1, on poverty, uh, turns out to be 8.1 something, and with this 95% confidence interval. So it's significant. That is, it doesn't cover 1. It's way above 1 for the lower limit. And we're saying then that the odds of being in the low class relative to the high class at time 1 is much higher for poverty 1 than for poverty 0. It's 8.101 times higher. Th that is the, um, the order that we got from the reordering. Now, if you keep the order of the first run, which is the medium, high, low order, that could be of interest too, where low is the reference class. So we're saying then that the odds ratio for being in a class one of C1 on for in the regression of pow on poverty, that odds ratio is 0 0.232. It's also significant, does not cover one, that is the interval does not cover one, and it's just happened to be lower than one. So we say that the odds of being in the medium class, uh, which is the first one here, right, relative to the low class at time one is much lower for poverty than not being in poverty, which makes sense.